Hi, we're going to be looking at two solo piano idioms from the early 20th century today, Boogie Woogie from Chicago and Harlem Stride. My name is Will Sargison. I'm teaching uh, jazz piano here at Jazz Music Institute in Brisbane. Uh, I specialize in the more vintage forms of jazz piano, particularly Boogie Woogie, Stride, some New Orleans rhythm and blues, but also some more mainstream bebop and swing music from the 40s and 50s. So the first thing we're going to look at today is a bit of boogie woogie piano. Now boogie woogie is really the earliest form of what became rock and roll piano in the 50s, the likes of Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard. If you trace that style back to its earliest roots, you come to boogie woogie, which came to prominence in the 1920s in Kansas City and up the Mississippi River to Chicago, based mainly in Chicago in the later years. So boogie woogie really evolved out of the blues. It's based almost exclusively on the 12 bar blues format. Uh, it's a very unsophisticated style, but uh, quite physically demanding and interesting and not very widely heard anymore these days. So like stride piano, boogie woogie is really all about what's happening in the left hand. Left hand is usually a continuous pattern known in uh, classical circles as an ostinato, which will either be four or eight beats to the bar. So I'll give you an example of some, some typical boogie woogie left hand patterns. So it's almost exclusively based on 12 bar blues, as I said, there's, uh, there's very little uh, extended jazz harmony going on. This is music from the 1920s after all, and that uh, degree of harmonic exploration hadn't really been pioneered yet. Uh, so it's, it's quite basic conceptually and theoretically, but it's all about getting that left hand to a point where it's on autopilot, it sort of takes care of itself, and then you can focus most of your attention on what the right hand is doing. And like jazz that came later, uh, improvisation is a huge part of it. So as in, in uh, typical classic jazz, you have the melody stated at the beginning and at the end, and everything that happens in between is improvised. So I'll give you a bit of an example of some more boogie woogie. Here's a classic from Meadlux Lewis, a little excerpt called Honky Tonk Train Blues, 1927. <laughs> So another boogie woogie left hand pattern I, I illustrated briefly uh, was the walking octaves, which is one of the most physically demanding and uh, easy to get wrong left hand patterns out there. It, it'll wear you out after a while, but um, a bit of practice. It goes like this. Thank you. 
so that's the sort of pattern that uh, boogie pioneers like Pete Johnson, Meadlux Lewis and Albert Ammons made popular in the 30s and 40s. Uh, eventually boogie woogie was jumped upon by the big bands and it became a bit of a big band art form. Bands like Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey and even Duke Ellington all had boogie woogie arrangements but uh, in its roots it's a solo piano art form. Moving on to a little bit of stride piano now. Now stride uh, was very different in its roots and origins from Boogie Woogie, whereas Boogie Woogie came out of straightforward blues, a very early and unsophisticated style of American music. Harlem Stride evolved out of ragtime, which uh, in its own way sort of evolved out of 19th century classical music at the end of the 19th century. Uh, pioneers like Scott Joplin. Um, but stride piano evolved out of ragtime, which featured that walking, that jumping left hand. But unlike ragtime, it was made to swing. It didn't have a straight eight note, eighth notes feel. It had more of a swung feel, like typical jazz of the day and all the jazz that's followed. So I'll give you an example of some, some basic stride piano. As you could see there, it's not all about just the to and fro, jumping backwards and forwards. There's little passing chords, walking tenths, tenths going up and down chromatically. All interspersed with the back and forth typical stride piano motion. So there were other devices that were used. You may have heard in the intro music, I played a little bit of Echoes of Spring by Willie the Lion Smith, a great stride pianist. And he used this sort of walking tenth pattern, which went like this. That's another device that was widely used. And of course, just exclusively walking tenths. another common device. And it was often used in up-tempo. So Fats Waller, probably the king of stride piano, who learned directly from the master James P. Johnson, sort of took stride piano to the next level and remains probably the all-time master of the style. I'll play you a little excerpt of some of his uh, playing from the classic Handful of Keys, 1929. <laughs> So this is a, uh, a very tricky style, I'll be honest. It took me a long time to come to terms with it. I was already quite a competent pianist when I discovered stride piano in earnest and tried to have a crack at it. Very physically demanding, uh, the accuracy required, especially in the left hand, to hit those notes cleanly and accurately is, uh, was pretty daunting, yeah. I, I wish there were, there were shortcuts, but um, 
like, a, like any piano, there's a whole lot of diligent practices required to, to get your hands around it. Uh, in the right hand, the, the left hand sort of dominates the, uh, the attention when talking about stride piano, but the right hand is sort of just as uh, idiosyncratic. There's a whole lot of devices that players like Wally used, particularly moving around thirds and sixths in the right hand. fashion style. Uh, it's it's uh, somewhat dated, but uh, I've found a lot of charm in the, in the early solo piano idioms. Uh, of course, this all changed when bebop came on the scene. Solo piano had really died out and, uh, and band uh, jazz really became the thing. And the, the left hand changed dramatically. No longer did the left hand need to be heavy and carrying the time and carrying the harmony. There was a bass player for that and possibly a guitarist strumming away as well. So the left hand evolved from something like into more like or punctuated stabbed chords. So tenths, as I mentioned, are a big part in the left hand for getting that stride piano sound. Now that requires a reasonably large hand, uh, but there are ways around that. If your hand can't quite reach that span, you can sort of jump the tenth, either by playing the little finger note as a grace note going up, or in reverse, the thumb plays the grace note going down. So you can go. of a bona fide stride piano device as well. It's not just a, a cheat for, for those who have smaller hands. Now for, for pianists who are keen to extend their vocabulary into stride piano, I would suggest uh, focusing on just the left hand only with the metronome uh, to start with. Forget the right hand and try just a sort of a medium tempo, maybe about 140 beats per minute, just with the left hand. And try just something simple, say a 12 bar blues progression at first would work. You notice a couple of devices I used there I neglected to mention earlier is you can flip the beat intentionally. This was something stride pianists would do. So it wouldn't always be um par. Occasionally they'd double up a par and then the um would fall on the upbeat instead of a downbeat like this. That's a little bit more advanced but it's something you can fool around with with the metronome. And also try to uh, keep varying the low notes that you hit. So it's not all one five, one five. You can do a lot of passing chords uh, or chromatic approach notes like this. I'm playing it with two hands there for simplicity, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, now, artists to check out if you really want to get into stride piano include the great Fats Waller, James P. Johnson, uh, UB Blake was very good, and then more well-known, I'm sorry, more recent pianists like Dick Hyman, Dick Wellstood, uh, and Ralph Sutton. Uh, currently, there's guys around, uh, some of the world leaders today include Luca Falastro and Rosano Sportelli. A couple of great books to check out include Harlem Stride Piano Solos by Ricardo Schivales. He also wrote a great book called Jazz Piano, The Left Hand, which includes stride and all the other subgenres of jazz piano, most of which are typified by what the left hand is doing. I've come to realize through reading that book that uh, 
what separates the, the styles of jazz piano from one another is what the left hand is doing or isn't doing. So I highly recommend those, jazz piano, the left hand, Harlem stride piano solos. Okay, so here ends the brief lesson. I hope you enjoyed watching that. Uh, leave a comment below if you enjoyed it or if you have a question about stride piano or a suggestion on something else I could cover in a future video. Uh, we hope to see you here at JMI, uh, enrolled for lessons or to come and see a live performance, JMI Live. Thanks for watching and I'll play a bit of Keeping Out of Mischief now. Thank you.